Hello guys and welcome to uh, another week's episode of Mr. 305 looking at some new aircraft that are coming in in the next uh, sort of month or so and um, we're going to start today or this week with the uh, the Cockspur Cessna Citation C510 Mustang now I've gone and bought this today just to have a little look at it and see what the crack is and, um, and basically at the end of this video it's going to be a short video today guys because I've got to uh, work early in the morning as per usual uh, we're going to have a little look round it and I'm going to tell you whether it's worth the money that I paid for it and hopefully uh, you guys will uh, take that on board when you uh, go ahead and buy it so I have had a, a fly around in this already this evening I had a look round um, and gone through a lot of, the, a lot of the aspects with the aircraft a lot of, lot of things that that kind of not very good and things that are absolutely outstandingly good so let's just start off with the uh, we might as well start off with the exterior model, alright? Um, the exterior model on this aircraft, I'm not going to lie, is absolutely fantastic, alright? It is stunning. Visually, it's stunning. Um, you know, you've got a lot of things that are on there. I mean, you've even got the pull to open sign on the door there that's actually in the chrome. Uh, this aircraft is, is well used around the UK as well, guys. Uh, I pass um, RAF Northolt down London quite often. And these aircraft are um, on the chart list down there with the military and also the civilian side as well. Uh, so you can see looking at the wings, you've got all the LED systems on this aircraft, so it's quite a new one. Uh, your chrome engine intakes there, a bit of grass. And also your your movements of the uh, you know of the systems is absolutely spot on. Um so yeah, looking around the front, we've got uh, landing gear in front of us there, which all look realistic to life. Uh, your landing gear lights are tucked away underneath the belly, which again, all realistic to life. Now, yeah, I'm not going to lie, it looks absolutely stunning. Um, similar aircraft in the game to this, you've got the CJ-4, which is the base aircraft from Sobo. Um, it's, it's a similar size, you know, it's a, I'm sure it's... A, Five passenger aircraft, six passenger aircraft, including the co-pilot seat. Um, so it's a small kind of business jet. You know, it's it, it's really really handy for getting into small air airports. It's not got reverse thrust on it, so you are just relying on uh, a low landing speed and full flaps landing speed on this aircraft is round about 75 knots. Uh, that's the minimum control speed. So I'll probably go for about 80 knots, depending on your wind speed when you're coming in for a landing. Um, so there is two doors on this aircraft. You've got your emergency exit in the centre of the fuselage, which I don't think opens at the minute. Um, and also you've got your main door that does open. So what we'll do, we'll jump inside. Have a look at the copy here. So in the layout of the copy, we've got uh, the um, the G1000 kit, which is uh, built into this aircraft in real life as well. And you've also got the well, I've got the working tile on this as well, and I'll show you that in just a momento. You'll have, be able to have a look at that. So we've got the copy. We've got the dual throttle layouts. Okay. Um, it's. I want to say it's very similar to the Honda Jet, which it probably is. It's quite small. It's a compact aircraft. But if you actually see one in real life, it's really quite small. You know, it's a. It's a big car size. You know, like an SUV size. That's, that's exactly what, how big this is. You know, so space is limited. Um, with the cockpit as well, guys, things do work. So you do have your sun visor shades that uh, do work. Oh, when you drag them into this, but yeah, they do, they do work. Um, you've also got a checklist which you can press. Also opens, brings out the start and end procedures before takeoff, takeoff, climb, and cruise. Although it doesn't have landing checklist, I don't know why. I don't think there's any. Oh, oh, oh! There you go. You press the blue bit at the bottom, it flicks the page over, and you've got your landing checklist and shutdown checklist. Excellent. Didn't know that, guys. Something new every day. Uh, also, guys, with the phone, um, this is your control pad for your chocks and stuff. Now, to turn it on, you will have to press. It's like a it's like a real Samsung phone. You do have to press the side of the button, just to the sort of uh, top right hand side, the little button there. You press that, and then you've got all your you kind of uh, uh, your options there. So let's go ahead and press some options. Let's press. Let's put chocks on, engine covers, pit covers, and this is quite funny. I did find this very, very, very exciting um, you've got a red carpet which I'll show you in a minute we'll open the cargo doors 
And what we'll do is we'll have to skip straight to the main door here. Look in the cabin while, while we're here. <coughs> the cupboards don't work. Uh, interior lighting's not great. It does work, but it's it's not fantastic. Uh, so four comfy seats in the back there. Depending on what configuration you've got. And the tables do pull out, so you can um, pull the tables out as well on both sides. And they, they do work. And also your um, blinds work on each window which is quite cool and it does block the light out as well you can actually see there they are modelled to block the light out so it will be pretty cool indeed uh, your lights and interior lights do work uh, but at night time they will come on not very great to have the interior lights on guys at night time you do have to enable the uh, cockpit light on one small notch All right. That's something apparently they are going to change. So let's open the door. Get that open. There's no door sounds at the minute, which is a bit disappointing. There's no uh, sort of sounds to the doors. But you can see here, this is my favourite bit. It's got a red carpet. And it's also got, you know, a Rolls Royce waiting for the client there as well. I mean, that's pretty cool. Not very well modelled, but it's, it's you know, it's, it, <laughs> that's a bit of immersion. Uh, so you can see there, guys, door is open. Uh, the doors modelled really well. Like I said, there's no sounds, so you can't uh, hear any sounds of doors or anything like that, which is a bit disappointing. Um, you've got your luggage compartment space there at the front. They're all open as well with the uh, with the app, and obviously your pit-up covers, your engine covers, and also your chocks as well. Um, there is something at the back here. Looks like a latch that opens up. I want to say that would probably be more luggage space. Um, if you guys know what that is, please tell me in the comments because I have no idea. But I, w I imagine that would open up for luggage space. Because um, I don't, I, I just don't think that's the only luggage space on here. Uh, anyway, let's get back to the cockpit. Let's get rid of the. Uh, let's get rid of the uh, <laughs> Rolls Royce because we're in open. Not many. And also, guys, you can press uh, passengers so you can have. One, two, three, four passengers on board on this uh, configuration, and you can enable a co-pilot as well, so you can have a little friend when you're flying. Uh, this is Jenny. Say hello, Jenny. Uh, and if we go in the back, <coughs> you can see here you've got your uh, uh, your modelled uh, pedestrians or passengers in the back there, which is pretty cool. Uh, I don't know who they are in real life. Obviously, modelled off some people. So let's go ahead and have a look at the G1000 systems on board this aircraft. So I'll we'll go ahead and just uh, get rid of the co-pilot, get rid of the passengers, save on the frames, and close the cargo doors. It's a shame that you don't, you can't open the you know, door from this app as well. I don't know why it's not on there, but I thought apparently it's, uh, it's 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 going. Apparently that's what they say. Um, so let's go ahead and we'll turn on the batteries. Then, then one thing to notice as well here, guys, the the batteries and the avionics are on the same. Uh, bus system so as soon as you turn the battery on the avionic system comes alive as well because that has your engine and stuff engine gauges on there so you can see this is the working title system uh, 1.0 I've got on board this is the only system they've uh, developed so far we'll get rid of that uh, is really good integration on this and it works really well um, the VNAV system is a bit iffy uh, when you're trying to catch the VNAV it does work but sometimes it doesn't work it's one of them things in the simulator that you know that could work better. Um, cockpit uh, panel lighting's exceptionally good, especially at night time. And obviously, you've got your your temperature and control fans over here. That doesn't work. The temperature, the air conditioning button works, but the temperature fans don't. Now, to start the aircraft, all right, guys. There is a bit of a knack to it. Okay, so you'll notice there when I put the throttle up to full, it doesn't actually reach takeoff. Um, configuration this is a glitch all right so as much as you try and fix this you ain't gonna fix it all right so that's as much as your throttles will go that's full throttle that's about 98 99 percent m1 percentage that is your full throttle you know you're only gonna need about 90 percent 85 percent m1 anyway to take off which is about there um i would say as well um there's a little catch with these throttles okay so when you're going to try and start the engines, you ain't going to get them started in a cold and dark state. And you're thinking, what the hell's going on? Why can't I start it? I can be the throttles to idle. They are not starting. Okay? There is a little latch on the throttles just below the main lever. 
you got to press that and that engages your fuel cutoff all right now that's not mentioned in the manual when you come to start the aircraft but that is something that you will have to learn um, when you uh, I found it by mistake because I was thinking you know why won't this aircraft start it's not in the checklist it's not in the manual there's nothing to say that you have to do that in the manual and uh, yeah it just says move the throttles to idle now you would just think that would be that you know but yeah there is a cut off switch just below there press that and that shuts your engines down and starts them so you can start them back up again flaps to the right <coughs> we'll lower the flaps down get them down to full there's no APU on this aircraft um, there's, at the minute there is no um, auxiliary power option alright there's no uh, ground power option on this aircraft at the minute it's just literally your batteries and your emergency batteries okay so there's nothing else uh, on this aircraft parking brakes at the bottom there and all, all your FMC system is controlled by this keypad at the bottom just blood throttles there and like I say this is the working title so it uses the uh, the next ride all the traffic's absolutely spot on uh, obviously if traffic's engaged there but you can see you know it is a bit of a pain not gonna lie it's a bit of a pain to operate because you've got your controls below the throttles when you're trying to it's a lot better when it's touch screen but yeah which is pretty cool um, what else can I show you in this one guys very quickly so some, obviously some visors both sides do work have a look. Uh, lighting. So let's have a look at lights on the outside of the aircraft. So the lighting system on this aircraft is actually based on the real thing and it's based on the, one of the new models so it does have an LED lighting system. So let's go ahead and put on the taxi lights. And there's your taxi lights in there. Also built in is the landing lights which are a little bit uh, brighter. It does have recognition lights although don't know how to use them yet I don't think the model right so we'll see when that comes at some point in a bit of an update uh, navigation lights on this very well modeled um, I have lights on you can see there and this is one of the very few aircraft that I've seen this on which is very clever you've got the uh, the tricolor <coughs> wingtip lights and navigation lights so you've got your, your navigation lights uh, green facing forward white facing back and in the middle guys you've got your strap lights which are LED you can see there they're modelled extremely well and uh, I'm actually very impressed with the model on them lights because they've actually taken the time to put that in there and I think that's a really big deal when it comes to developing aircraft uh, next gen for this stuff this uh oh, stop zooming out so far and obviously you've got your beacon light on top as well which will be just a steady on and off um, could maybe do a little bit better mapping on there position wise and then obviously you've got your wing lights which do work as well and what I'll do I'll just drop the darkness a little bit just so we can see what the lighting's like with this aircraft you can see there good reflections all round on this aircraft you know it's they've done really well um, yeah, I think they've done really well. But yeah, that lighting systems on that aircraft are absolutely fantastic. And it's just real to life, guys. Alright? It's exactly what it is in real life. So this is the cockpit at night time. You can see there that it's well lit. The, the buttons are well lit at the bottom. And it's, it, it looks nice. Alright? Like I say, guys, to activate the interior lights, you can see... Uh, So the floodlights don't work. Um, that, again, that, that needs to come in an update. All right, they need to improve the uh, the, the interior model with the lighting. Yeah, I think. But so the little switch to the left-hand side is the cockpit uh, spotlight. All right. So to turn the interior lights on, you just click them, click them once. And that's all you need to do, and that'll turn your interior lights on. In there. Um, what's it like to fly? It's actually really nice. Um, it's really nice to fly. It's, it's it flies like a CJ4. Um, it's a bit smoother than a CJ4, but it's modelled really well. The suspension's modelled really well. When you brake, you've got the, you know the rebound is, is is absolutely spot on. The other thing I would say it's um, when you take off, 
the trim is automatically set to quite high up, so you have to you have to bug it. You have to bug out quite quickly once you get off the runway. Um, and this aircraft will climb at a very good rate. You know, you, you're talking about 2,500 vertical speed, straight up. You know, 20, 23,000 about uh, in about seven minutes or so. So it will climb at an exceptional rate, and it is a powerful aircraft. Uh, landing speed nice and slow. Good control. Um, ILS. All the systems catch as they should. The VNAV's a bit iffy, um, but the ILS catches really well, you know, and it brings it in. It's not an auto land on this aircraft, so please don't think it is. It's it's not. Um, the auto land systems are usually only on it commercial airliners, so this is not an auto land. It's got an ILS glidescope capture, which obviously you have to disengage the autopilot once you uh, become to minimums or runway visual. Now this aircraft. Uh, does not have a speed hold, uh, even though it's got the speed button, that's just a climb rate speed. It does not have an auto throttle, so th the difference between auto throttle and a speed hold is the speed will hold the correct speed, so you set your speed to, I don't know, um, 190 knots, or 180 knots on a climb. Uh, the aircraft will pitch and adjust the pitch to climb to that sort of rate. Uh, an auto throttle will hold your speed at 190, no matter what the um, the rate is, it will adjust the engine speed rather than the pitch of the aircraft. So that's the difference between auto throttle and uh, speed set. So auto throttle, the it, it's exactly what it says in tin. The thro it adjusts the throttle, so it will adjust the engine speed to compensate for speed against pitch. And the speed button uh, compensates by using pitch to gain speed or decrease speed. Um, apart from that, guys, would I recommend this? Yes, I would. I would. Uh, yeah, I would recommend it. It's a fantastic little aircraft, and for twenty-five quid. You know, you you can't go wrong. It is beautiful. In fact, you know, you go like you say, you go past the uh, RAF Northolt down in London on the M4, uh, and you'll see about four of these sat there, uh, British Reg, and they, they do get used quite a lot in the UK. All right, and they do fly overseas, and they, they have got a very good distance on them. So I think uh, as a small business jet, if you're interested in flying this, I'd recommend it. It flies really well, uh, nice and smooth, and uh, performance-wise, it's it's not too sharp on the controls, I use the um, Alpha Brava system and it's not too sharp, it's nice and smooth and you know it's it's, it's what it should be, it's, it's exactly what it says on the tin and I think they've done a fantastic job of actually releasing this for a really reasonable price because this sort of aircraft I would probably say it should be you know in the £45 mark this is one of them ones that should be up there um, and to release it at 25 quid, I think that's absolutely fantastic Hats off to them, I've done a cracking job. Uh, anything else you want to know, guys? Please let me know. Um, I'm not going to take it to the sky today because it's time for me to go to peeps. But um, yeah, I might release a video next week of flying around doing a short hop. Um, but yeah, definitely recommend downloading the working title for this aircraft as well. Uh, it's, it's a must for the systems that it's got. I would definitely recommend it. And yeah. Fire away, guys! Get out there and buy it. It's uh, it's a great aircraft. It's um, fun, fun to fly, and it's realistic. And that's the that's what you want in this simulator: is aircraft that are fun to fly and have a realistic handling feature as well. Take care, stay safe, and I'll speak to you soon. Thank you.